Rebrands and refreshes can be a minefield. Pretty much every company needs to do them at some point, but how do you make sure that they go well? Well, today we're gonna look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of brand refreshes. And trust me, there are some brand refreshes so ugly that even the mother decides they can't love them after a week. What is that? And we're gonna to attempt to answer the question, what makes a successful brand refresh? Let's start with the ugly brand refreshes first because they're the funniest. Gap's logo is iconic. For those of us who grow up in the 90s and the 2000s, it's seared into our minds. But by 2010, the brand was on a bit of a slide and leadership decided that a new logo was gonna be the solution to all its problems. You ready? Voila! This looks like, you know that game where one person has to describe what they're looking at and the other person is blindfolded and has to try and draw what the first person's describing and then you look at it at the end and everyone has a laugh. Of course, design is subjective, so some people hated it, some people loved it, right? No, people just hated it. Someone set up a dedicated Twitter account to laugh at it and one plucky entrepreneur even built a website where users could submit their own Gap logos. Side note, I went to the website, looks like it's been bought by some enterprising SEO who's decided to use it for crypto backlinks. <sighs> we SEOs just here to make the world better. So what happened? Well, within a week, Gap cancelled the new logo and brought back the old one. Another brand refresh that falls into the ugly category is Tropicana, the juice brand. For some reason, Tropicana decided that its old, familiar packaging, which customers had spent years learning how to find in supermarket shelves, needed to be replaced with something newer, fresher, cleaner. So they replaced it with something that's much more generic. But the worst sin about this rebrand is that it replaced the implied benefit on the old packaging. What is Tropicana selling? It's fresh fruit juice. Nothing says fresh like this iconic image of a straw straight into an orange. Of course, what happened? They rolled it back. This is an easy mistake to make. If you just start with a blank illustrator page and you just start designing some stuff, you can quite quickly convince yourself that you've got a great idea for a brand strategy. But that's actually a really bad way to start a rebranding project. When we're doing rebranding for clients at Exposure Ninja, we always start by talking to their customers first. What we're trying to understand is what do the customers really most value about working with this company? Why did they choose them in the first place? A rebranding should emphasize what customers most love about you, not discard it. And I think we can see evidence of this in Burberry's recent rebrand, rebrand. Burberry's iconic knight and horse logo is over 120 years old and feels really English. Now, a lot of people value the Burberry brand because of its Englishness. But the rebrand in 2018 arguably lost a lot of this. Sure, they added London, England to the logo, but there was absolutely no heritage communicated in the logo itself. Okay, that's the ugly. Let's take a look at the just plain bad. Here's the incredible logo reveal for the new Kia Cars logo. I love drones, I love fireworks. They've got drones shooting fire, ah, oh, amazing. And here it is, the new Kia Cars logo. One problem. This new logo has been out almost three years and still people are searching for KN cars. KN car, 18,000 searches per month. KN car brand, six and a half. KN cars, three and a half. This is just the US alone. Look at all the variations of this. People don't know that this logo says Kia. I mean, surely if your logo just has to do one job. Fortunately for Kia, Google's ranking algorithms are smart enough to over time learn that when someone searches for KN cars, they're looking for Kia. But this weird, unreadable logo thing has opened up a unique niche for Kia regional dealerships and affiliate websites to try and rank prominently for KN cars keywords. But this is madness. All of this should be branded traffic. This should just be people searching for Kia and going to Kia websites. This shouldn't be people having to do some pre-research to even learn about what brand this is that they're looking at. What a waste of everyone's energy. Just separate the letters. All right, in the UK, we have a parcel delivery firm called Hermes which changed its name to Every. Now I'm gonna be honest, Hermes hasn't had the best reputation over the years. I'm, now I'm trying to show you this news story, but look at the state of the ads on this page. I can't even see the content. <laughs> oh gosh. What have we marketers done to the internet? Anyway, Hermes decided that a rebranding would help it shed some of its old bad reputation and embrace a brighter future. So they unveiled their new name, Every. They chose a unique spelling, which is smart, because if they actually just called it every, then it would be really difficult to rank for. Whereas this, you can rank, you can own that term. Love that. 
Trouble is, frustrated customers spotted the joke and all made it at the same time. Barbarossa Smith speaking for the people. Now, if you're watching this thinking, oh, we might need a brand refresh or we do need a brand refresh or we need a freaking marketing refresh, then good news, I have some free help for you. The team here at Exposure Ninja can do what's called a free website and digital marketing review for you, which will include advice on whether or not you need a brand refresh and some of the considerations that you might want to think about if you're going down that route. To request this completely free website and marketing review, go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review, fill in a short form, and if you qualify, one of the team will send you your video review, usually within two to three working days. It's completely free of charge, it's totally awesome, and you can get it right now at ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. Okay, what about the best rebrandings? What do they do differently that makes customers love and celebrate them instead? Fairly recently, Burger King decided to rebrand, and instead of going for a completely new logo and identity, what they did was choose a period from their heritage and just remix that logo. But they didn't just remix the logo, they also brought in a whole bunch of design assets and a whole visual language that worked well with this logo, but didn't look old fashioned or dated. I think this logo and this branding is really strong, it stands out a mile and it really emphasises the fun which is one of the things that they were going for. Another brand that took this approach fairly recently was Dunkin, formerly Dunkin Donuts. Now they decided to drop the donuts from their name in order to make customers aware that they sold loads of other products and when they did their rebrand they didn't change the whole visual identity of the company. This was more of a brand refresh than a full from scratch design and it works really well for them. Their branding is iconic, people are familiar with it. This doesn't need to be rebuilt from scratch. And by the way, if you think all of this stuff only applies to consumer facing businesses, well, Intel took a very similar approach with its fairly recent redesign. Look at how its design has evolved over the years. It's only ever had three logos and the one that it's moved to is basically a combination of the previous two. For a business like Intel that needs to keep their products looking fresh and sharp, because honestly a lot of the people buying the products don't know how to judge a product other than how it looks and Intel's chips are sort of inside the machines that they're buying, this is a really smart move. They keep the familiarity that they've spent millions and millions of dollars building up over the years, but they give it some small tweaks so that it feels new, it feels fresh. And that seems to be the common thread. It's difficult not to notice that the most successful and well-received brand redesigns and refreshes actually aren't working from scratch. They're taking the heritage and what people love about a brand or a company and they're tweaking it and refining it to make it look more up to date. The classic example of course is Coca-Cola. Now this doesn't mean that you have to do a Coca-Cola and basically have the same logo for your entire history, but maybe do a Pepsi instead, where although you keep tweaking, redefining and modernizing your logo, you always tie it back to a central theme that's recognizable amongst your customers. Of course, sometimes you need to go for a full name change like Hermes to Every, or a radical redesign like Kia to KN, but these approaches tend to be much more risky. Whichever route you take though, our advice at Exposure Ninja is to make sure that you're listening to your customers and that they are central to the process. You wanna be talking to them ahead of time to understand what they love about your business and your brand, but also to understand any perceptions that they might have of you that you want to address with your logos. For example, when we're running our Fix Your Marketing Machine service, sometimes we'll be working with a client's website that just looks really dated. And when we talk to their customers or we do our research, we find that actually people are assuming that their products and services are also dated because their website and their branding looks dated. In those cases, we'll seek to modernize the logo, the look and feel and the brand identity, but we don't want to lose all of the familiarity and credibility that the business has built up. So we tend to do more minor adjustments rather than a blank page, let's start from scratch approach. It's also a good idea to test your new logo or your brand identity with some customers first. Make sure that they recognize that it's you. Of course, your company's visual identity is only one aspect of your brand. Check out this video which will show you how to use brand positioning to significantly increase your leads and sales volume. And let us know in the comments, what's your favorite example of a great rebrand and also your favorite example of a total failure. Until next time, see you soon.